Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. As always, we believe it is a day to praise the Lord. Let's get a Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Happy, 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 happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. We praise God for the mothers, for the mothers with a husband, for the mothers without a husband, for the, for the single lady mothers. I, I'm, I'm still going to praise God for all the mothers because the mothers, oh, hallelujah, the mothers do what it takes to raise the children. And we know, we know, we know in, in our African-American community, we got so many mothers who are doing this job all by themselves. Uh, with the, with, but hold on. With the help of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so I, I say to all the mothers, happy Mother's Day. Be a Proverbs 31 mother, Proverbs 31 mom that says, charming is deceitful, beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done and let her work bring her praise at the city gates. So to the mothers, happy Mother's Day. Oh, hallelujah. I just get happy because, see, I'm blessed. I'm one of those blessed people. I still have my mother alive on this side of the Jordan, and, and, and I can talk to her. I can call her, and I can listen to her. Oh, hallelujah. And my mama, oh, my mama. Y'all got to excuse me. It's Mother's Day. My mama's favorite saying is, is good to me. It's good to me. And I, I love it every time she says it, whether she's eating some food or whether she's eating the word of God or whether she's she's just with someone having a good time with them. And she'll just all of a sudden say, oh, it's just good to me. Oh, hallelujah. And her favorite scripture. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not unto your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Oh, I just love that scripture. That's my mama's favorite scripture. So, mama, happy Mother's Day. All the mothers, happy Mother's Day. Let's go now to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this wonderful and beautiful Mother's Day. Lord, we know that you, you have blessed us in this world with mothers who love us unconditionally, just like you love us unconditionally, Lord. And we thank you for that right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for, 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 for the mothers that do have a husband to help raise the children. We thank you, Lord, for, for the single mothers who, who don't have a husband and they're still raising your children. And then, Lord, on this Mother's Day, we thank you for the single fathers who are also being mothers and fathers to their children. Thank you, Lord, for mothers right now. Thank you, Lord, for those that raise the children in the way that they should go. That, that, that when they get older, even though they may depart, they will return to your word, oh God. Thank you, Lord, and bless, bless the Heavenly Father, all the mothers. Now, Lord, we just lift you up and praise you for this day. Open up our ears, open up our minds, open up our hearts and our spirits and our soul to your word today. Touch the Heavenly Father as only you can. Bless this technology of Facebook and blog talk. Bless the Heavenly Father, the God in the midst ministry, Lord. Bless right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you for this ministry as it goes all around the world internationally, blessing people here, near, and far. Oh, Lord, we thank you. Now, Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus over everyone that is listening now and those that are going to listen later to this recording. 
Lord, we just ask you, whatever they stand in the need of, you already know. So provide, Lord, because you're Jehovah Jireh. Lord, give them peace right now because you're Jehovah Nisi. Lord, you, you are everything we stand in the need of. And we just thank you, Lord Jesus, right now that you're going to bless beyond anything we can ask or think according to that power working inside of us. And that power is you, O oh Lord, the power of your Holy Spirit in us, through us, and for us. Seal us now until that day of redemption, God, and help us give you praise every step of the way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And to my wife, I say happy Mother's Day to Lady Sandra. I, I put something together for her, put a little flower uh, pot together to sit on the front porch and all. Yeah, she loved it. She loved it. I, hey, 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 I got to pop my collar. <laughs> Because she, she said, oh, that was good. Hallelujah. And so we're going to have ourselves a good time. We're going to go to church together this morning. And then we're going to come home and eat with the family. And then we headed on to the movies. We're going to gonna have a nice, enjoyable Mother's Day. Hallelujah. Now, let's get into our Sunday school lesson for this morning. Our Sunday school lesson for this morning comes from Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 2, and I'm going to read verses 14 through 16, and then Leviticus chapter 23, verses 9 through 14, and verse 22. The title of today's lesson is First Fruit, First Fruit. So we're going to now go and read our lesson. Uh, we're going to read our lesson. Let me see. I want to read it this morning from the message bible that's where i want to read it from i want to read it from the message bible i'm gonna read it from the message bible uh leviticus chapter 2 verses 14 through 16 and it says this if you present a grain offering of first fruit to god bring crushed heads of the new grain roasted pour all and incense on it it's a grain offering the priest will burn some of that mixed grain and all with all the incense as a memorial, a free gift to God. That's Leviticus chapter 2, verses 14 through 16. Now we're going to Leviticus chapter 23. Leviticus chapter 23, starting at the ninth verse. And like I said, I'm reading from the message Bible. God spoke to Moses telling the people of Israel, when you arrive at the land that I will give you and reap its harvest, bring to the priest a sheave of the first grain that uh, that you harvest. He, he will wave the sheaves. The priest will wave the sheaves before God for acceptance of, on, on your behalf. On the morning after the Sabbath, the priest will wave it. On the second day, on the same day, excuse me, that that you that you wave the sheaves and offer a year old male lamb without defect for a whole burnt offering to God, and with it the grain offering of four quarts of fine flour mixed with all a free gift. To God, a pleasant, a pleasing fragrance, and also a drink offering of a quart of wine. Don't eat any bread or roast or, or roast or fresh grain until you have presented this offering to your God. This is a, a perpetual decree for all generations to come wherever you live. And now the final verse is verse 22 of Leviticus chapter 23. When you reap the harvest of your land, don't reap the corners of your fields or gather the, uh, gather the gleans. Lead them for the poor and the foreigner. I am God, your God. Oh, hallelujah. And the tag for this, this lesson is, First fruit of the harvest. First 
fruit of the harvest. And the memory verse, the, the key verse for this lesson is verse 23 of Le being, uh, Leviticus 23, verse 10. When you be come into the land, which I have given you and shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheave of the first fruit of your harvest. Hallelujah. See, 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 I, before I can get into my key concept, understand, God is saying something. You're going to have a harvest. Oh, yeah, he's going to bless you with a harvest. He's going to bless you with abundance and plenty. You have a responsibility, though. you got to bring that first fruit to God, and I'm going to get into that later. Key, the, the key concept for this lesson, the key concept for this lesson is God wants us to give him our best, not our leftovers. No, no, he wants us to give him our best. Amen. Amen. So, so my, my keys, I call them keys for kids it, to make the lesson as simple as possible. God is amazing beyond our imagination. Number one, he's amazing beyond our imagination. And that means he, he can do and give more than we could ever dream or think about. He's amazing. Number two, because of his great power and love for us, we shouldn't hesitate to give him our very best. Oh, hallelujah. That's what this lesson is about. God has given us his best, and we are to give him our best. And so have you been giving God your best? Or you've been giving him your leftover? Oh, we're going to get into that a little bit in a minute. My, my, my friends, they laugh at me. They, they laugh at me. They said, oh, boy, when you look over your glasses, you talking some serious stuff. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because we're going to get into that. Now, 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 let's, let's for those big, deep theologians and those who have studied the Bible, you, you don't want no keys for kids. You, you want the deep stuff. So we're going to talk a little bit about the deep stuff. This, so the learning facts that we're aiming for today in this lesson is to describe the first fruit offerings and its purpose. The biblical principles that we want to aim for today is to relate the first fruit concept to the new covenant that we're under. Oh, hallelujah. We're going to talk about that new covenant and the first fruit. And then our daily application that we're aiming for when we get through with this lesson is to adjust our behavior in order to live biblically as the first fruit. Uh-oh, we, we got a daily challenge that's off the chain. We got to live as the first fruit. Hallelujah. And so as we look at this lesson today, we're going to look at it from three parts. Preparing the first fruit. That's Leviticus chapter two. And we're going to look at 14 through 16. And then we're going to look at the offering of the first fruit. That's going to be Leviticus chapter 23 verses nine through 14. And then finally, we're going to look at sharing the harvest, sharing the blessing. Yes, yes, because see, we, we forget that God blesses us to be a blessing. If you're not being a blessing to somebody, the question is, did God really bless you? Or did you get blessed by some other means? Uh-oh, yeah, 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 yeah. When God gives you something, you, you know that you didn't earn it, you know that it was a gift, and you don't have, you, you, you're just excited about sharing your gift with someone else oh so we, we don't get down deep into that so 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 as an introduction to this lesson as an introduction to this lesson it has been said if we really want to determine a person's love and commitment to god we 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 don't need to look any further than their checkbook yep what we give to god speaks loudly about how important god is to us is he really first in our lives? 
or is it the flat screen TV we desire first? Or, or are we willing to bring to God what he requires of us by his word? Or, 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 or do we believe only in tipping the Lord on Sunday? Mm -hmm. God, God is challenging us with giving because he knows that many of us have, if I give, what's in it for me mindset but as god's children we must know that when we obey him uh, he will bless us in ways we we cannot imagine or even think about not because of the amount we give but because of the willingness to be obedient to him and so today, as, as we look at God's instructions to Moses and, uh, for the children of Israel, he gives them the responsibility of the first fruit offering. Let's remind, let's remind ourselves that God is also challenging us with our first fruit. Though we don't live in a, a, a see an agrarian society as Israel did, we're not farmers and cattlemen in general. We still have the same obligation to commit our first fruit to the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Now, now some some people, some people, I, I watched them come online and others are, are leaving line. It's okay. You can come back and listen to this recording later. But but you need to understand this first fruit. Because this first fruit is, is off the chain. And, and I, I've learned it. I've lived it. it. It's off the chain. It's off the chain. So so let me give you the background. Let me give you the background for this lesson so so I can make sure I paint the historical. Uh, position of what's going on here it is god told moses to to bring the people together so that he can tell them about the festivals that they're going to 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 enjoy uh for a perpetual uh festivals and and all that they have to do in these festivals um uh, and so in the jewish culture the beginning of the year is called rosh hashanah it it is it, it, rosh hashanah that means the head of the year. And, 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 and for the Jewish calendar, Jewish religious calendar, that day is 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 nine nine uh this year, nine nine eight uh eighteen, September 9th. That's the beginning of their new year. And so 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 the Jews they, they end up they have two calendars. They have the religious calendar that begins with, with the month of, of a bead, and they also have uh, what is called a uh, 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 naysay, and, and 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 then that that's that that's their religious calendar, and then they have a civil calendar uh, that 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 and the month there is called it it the name, and 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 later known as Tishir. and it serves the that purpose that is six months after the beginning of the religious year. Uh, Rosh Hashanah begins the civil new year. Most important of, of, of either calendar was the three annual pilgrim feast, the feast of unleavened bread, which is combined with the Passover, the feast of harvest, and then the feast of ingathering. The first and the third of these feasts are weekly long observations between them. Uh, uh, is the single day feast of ingathering that is also called the feast of weeks and the feast of harvest or the day of first fruit. Yes. And that is the subject of today's lesson. The feast of weeks des designates points to seven weeks of grain harvest. And then on the 50th day, the day that is seen to conclude the harvest, the, the, the Israelites celebrate Pentecost. 
because penta means 50, a later designation that reflects that number, 50. <laughs> the correspondence between these, these agriculture agreeing based holidays and God's saving acts on behalf of his people were not mere coincidence. God acted powerfully to create a people and settle them in the promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey. The Israelites were to recognize that their presence in that land was a gift. The land really belonged to God, and he allowed the people to dwell there by his gracious, amazing provisions and grace. But as today's lesson opens, the people were not there yet. The setting of today's text is rather the encampment on Mount Sinai where the Lord had gave the law to the people through Moses. So here we have now the setting. And Moses is trying to tell the people what God desires for them to do with the first fruit of the harvest. Now, before I get into my first point of preparing the first fruit of the harvest, I got to put this in plain Mark McCoy English. God wants us to put our money where our mouth is. Yeah. You walk around talking about, I praise the Lord. He's my all in all. I give him glory and I give him honor. Well, if you praising him with your lips and with your mouth, you ought to be praising him with your money. Because see, you ain't growing no fruits and vegetables. You're not doing any cattle. But when the eagle flies on Friday, come on, somebody, that when the eagle flies on Friday and you get your paycheck, what do you do with it first? Well, do 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 you do you go and say, okay, uh, this is this is this is my offering, this is my first fruit I'm going to give to God. Whether whether you start off with simply saying I'm gonna give 10%. That's my tired. The way you're going to start off with that. Or whether you're going to be a cheerful giver, not a grudge giver. And you're going to say, God, I'm going to drop this on you. Because, see, when you sow sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. But when you sow bountifully, you're going to reap bountifully. And so you don't just, just hold yourself to the tide. See, that's, that's what's wrong with some of us New Testament, New Covenant people. We want to be, oh, well, I got to give God as a tithe. Oh, come on. You jacked up. You got to give more than that. Because, see, not only if you got to give him your tithe or your, 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 your tithe, but you ought to also give him your time and your talent. And, and, and then you ought to give him some more of your treasures. Oh, I'm, I'm messing with folks. I can't even get started here. It's some of us. It's some of us got so many treasures in our houses that, and we just we like we like got all this stuff stored up, and we ain't giving it to nobody. You ain't using it. Give it away. Mm, pretty, you messing with me? Yeah, yeah. Mm hmm. Show up. Show you right. But let's get on deeper. Let's get on deeper. Let's get deeper into the lesson. Uh, that's that. Cause see, some folks say, well, you just was talking about your opinion. Well, let's see what the lesson say. Let's see what the word of God is saying to us about giving the first fruit of the harvest. That, that which we have sown and now we have reaped, what are we supposed to do with that abundant harvest? Well, the first thing is we have to prepare the first fruit. Listen to the text again. Preparing the first fruit from Leviticus chapter 2. Leviticus chapter 2. Come on, computer, get me back to my Bible. Leviticus chapter 2. 
Leviticus chapter 2. Man, ain't this about nothing. All of my computers are just treating me bad this morning. All of my lessons is on my uh, going to my internet and it has asked me to reload and all of that. But hey, I got my handy dandy. Oh yeah, it's all jacked up. Yeah, you see how that all, that's one of them old Bibles. <laughs> got, got all kind of good notes on it. So I'm going to have to just go to Leviticus since since the, the, the computer don't want to act right. See, you ain't going to have me all jacked up, devil. I got the word of God in print. I got the word of God electronically. I got the word of God in my heart that I might not sin against God. Oh, hallelujah. I'm happy this day. It's Mother's Day. Okay, so we're going to look at Leviticus 2, and we're going to look at verse 14 through 16. And now this time, I'm reading out of my New King James Bible. And it says, if you offer a grain offering of your first fruit to the Lord, you shall offer for the grain offering of the first fruit, green heads of grain roasted on the fire, grain beaten from from full heads, and you shall put all on it and lay fragrances on it, and it is a grain offering. Then the priests shall burn the memorial portion, part of this beaten grain, and part of its oil with all the fragrance as an offering made by fire to the Lord. Now, I told you earlier, this, this offering here, this offering here is, 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 is a first fruit offering. This offering here is a free offering. This offering here is a fire offering. And, and the purpose of this is you have to prepare your offering for the Lord. Uh-oh. See, many folks just give God the leftovers. I'm here to tell you, every two weeks I get paid. I'm going to make it plain. I've already designated between 10 and 20% of my salary that I'm going to give to the church. So as a pastor, I give that to my church, New Harvest E-Church, New Harvest Church. Hey, boom. I get on my phone. I'm going to rate, uh-oh, hallelujah. All right. I'm, I'm doing so much illustration. I didn't cut off the, the line <laughs> Welcome to Block Talk on, the, on the conference Even call. When finished, and I got to put my host pin back in and all of that. Uh, uh, y'all y'all have to excuse me. I told you I'm excited this morning. So I got to put my host pin back in on my blog talk. I'm so, sorry, but I didn't. Okay, here we go, y'all. Give me a second. Three. Uh, where you at? Uh-uh. That ain't right. Let's do that again. Yeah, you see they talking to me. Here we go. All right. So we back online. You're calling back into a live show. We are reconnecting you now. All right. Those that's on the conference call, I was raising my phone up to illustrate it on Facebook. And anyway, I got it back online. But what I do, I take my phone soon as my check get in to my bank account on transferring. You know, you know how we do that now. And then I transfer money to the church account. Now, from that, then I'm under a church. The church I'm under is First Missionary Baptist Church, where uh, Reverend Dr. Julius R. Scruggs is pastor. Then I give a tithe of my church to my home church. Well, we're actually doing way more than that as a family. That's what we do. Now, in addition, what we do is that we have other churches. One is, 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 is New Harvest Church in 
Kenya. Then we sent an offering over there. Oh, man, what were you doing? You sent all these offerings. Because I got a great harvest. See, see, you got to understand. So this is my first fruit. And I got to give my first fruit. I got to give it. It's like, oh, yes, because I know if I give my first fruit, I'm showing God honor and I'm showing God praise. And I know the kind of God I serve. And he'll return, give me stuff. No, nah, man, look. Ooh. And so so that's your first job is, is get your mind and get your heart prepared to give your offer, not out of, out, out of necessity, not, not, not begrudging, but be a cheerful giver, cheerful giver. That, that's what that's all about. And so, so, so you got to prepare your offer. Now, now, now I ain't even talking about my time, my talent and my other treasures. See, see, cause you, you got to be prepared to give your time. I, I'm one of them people now. I'm, I'm learning how to get up at five o'clock in the morning, and and we do prayer and intercession at the house, me and the wife, for for the family and for various different things. So we get up early in the morning. So I have to go to bed at nine o'clock. Some days I come home from work, I have a full time job, and I lay and get me a nap on my couch, and I might sleep an hour or so so I can do something else. Or other times I have to sleep a long time because I know that I got some other assignments that I have to do. And so people will call. Come on, preachers. Come on, ministers. Come on, prayer warriors. Come on, intercessors. You know what I'm talking about. They'll call. And you can't just hang up on these folks when they call. And you might be on the call with them. You know you want to go to bed at 9 o'clock, but here it is, 1 o'clock in the morning, you ministering to people. Or you got to go to somebody and get them out of jail. Or you got to go and get them off the street, put them in a... These are the things that we're supposed to be prepared to do, not only with our money, with our treasure, but with our time and our talent. Oh, I'm talking to somebody right now. These are the first fruits. These are the first fruits. So now, so now we're going to go to our second part of our lesson. We prepared our fruit. We're preparing our fruit. We're preparing our fruit. Now, now, now we got to offer our fruit. Listen to Leviticus chapter 2. Leviticus chapter 23, excuse me. Leviticus chapter 23. Leviticus chapter 23. Leviticus chapter 23. Come on, Leviticus chapter 23. Find me in the Bible here. Here we go. Here we go. And we're going to start at verse 9. Let's go. And it says, and the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to the children of Israel and say to them, when you come into the land which I give, give you reap its harvest then you shall bring a sheave of the first fruit of your harvest to the priest and he shall wave the sheaves before the lord to be accepted on your behalf on that day after the sabbath the priest shall wave it, and you shall offer on that day when you wave the sheave a male lamb of the first year without blemish as a burnt offering to the Lord. Its grain offering shall be two tenths of an infant, infant of fine flour mixed with oil. An offering made by fire to the Lord for a sweet aroma, and its drink offering shall be of wine, one fourth of a hen. You shall eat neither bread nor parched grain nor fresh grain until the same day that you have brought your offering to your God. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generation and all your dwelling. Oh, hallelujah. This is how to offer the first fruit. So, so, so what was, what was the importance of giving the priest the first bundle of sheaves from the harvest? He says, this is what I need you to do. I need you to give it to the priest. Now, I got to stop right there. 
Like, I don't go to church because all them pastors want is your money. That's all they want is your money. I got something to tell you. I'm looking over my eyes now. If that's the foolishness you're thinking, I'm sorry. You missing out on your blessing because you're not giving to the priest, to the preacher, to the pastor. You are giving unto God. You got your eyes on the wrong person receiving your offering. And God don't need anything from you. He don't need anything from you because the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. And so anything you got, Everything you got don't belong to your low down tail anyway. It belongs to God. And he just gave it to you. And now he's challenging you to give some back in honor of the gift that he gave you. So, yeah. You want to be one of them knuckleheads that believe that, oh, God, oh, that preacher money is your money. You go and keep that. And watch how the curses of stealing from God come upon you. Yeah, I said it. You've been trying to figure out why all this stuff happening in your life. You didn't curse yourself because you're stealing from God. You better stop stealing from God. He told you if you give, he'll pour out a blessing that you don't have room enough to hear. I know folks don't want to hear this. But you need to understand, he'll rebuke the devourer for you if you give accordingly how he tells you to give. Hallelujah. So I had to, I had to go there. I had to go there. Pastor said, well, yeah, Pastor, you went there. I ain't talking about nobody. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. Because if you if you fit that shoe, oh, it's tight on you now. If I bowl down your alley, I just roll the strike. Now let's go on. And so, so, so that's why he said, bring them, bring them to the priest. Because see what the priest gonna do, they're gonna pray over it. And they're gonna pray. That, 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 that you receive your blessing because they are the instruments of God to do the wave offering. And that wave offering that they're, that they're doing, they're, they're praising God for what he's already done. They're praising God for what he's done right now. And they're praising God for what he's going to do in the future. That's what that wave offering is all about. And so Israel was told to bring the sheaves, the first fruit of their harvest to the priest. And he's going to do that wave offering. And he's going to do the wave offering. And then it says in verse 12, and you shall offer on that day when you wave the sheaves, a male lamb of the first year without blemish as a burnt offering. Uh-oh. Now we're getting into the deep stuff. A burnt offering. You got, you got, you got they're going to take that male lamb and going to give him as a burnt offering. And that male lamb is without spot or blemish. Mm-hmm. Why is this so important? Well, See, every time I see the word lamb, I can't think of nothing but about Jesus, the lamb that was slain, the lamb who was worthy. See, you have to understand that God gave his best 
when he gave Jesus Christ on the cross. God gave his best when he let Jesus Christ die on the cross. God gave his best when he let Jesus die and get buried in, in a bar or tomb. It was God's best that he gave for your sins and for my sins and the sins of the world. He gave his best. Are you ready to give your best? Or are you just going to give God your leftovers? When you give your best, God will resurrect the best for you. Like he resurrected Jesus and gave him all power in heaven and earth in his hands. You need to understand that you want that kind of blessing in every aspect of your life. I don't know about you. If if if, if you, you you want your your sins forgiven, you 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 want your 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 spirit, your soul, and your body resurrected. You want your finances resurrected. You want your your relationships with your family and your 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 children, your husband, your wife, your 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 your, your mama, your dad. You want all of that resurrected, brought back to life and to the new life. You gotta give your best. Stop being stingy. So he goes on to say, "It's a grain offering, and 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 it shall be a, a, a two tenths of a if of a fine mixed oil and, and 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 made by the fire to the Lord, and it's a sweet smelling aroma." See, I told y'all a couple of weeks ago when we was talking about what's going on in heaven and the 12, 24 elders and all of the four beasts, they got golden bowls that, that have, have this, this incense in it and these incense go up to God as a sweet smelling aroma because these are the prayers and the praise of the people. And when we pray, and when we praise God and they, that, that sweet smelling aroma, that's what that grain offering is about. When it goes up, Blessings come down. Oh, hallelujah. Are you praising God with your life as well as your lips? Are you praising God with your time, your talent, and your treasure? Are you praising God by being a blessing to other people? And then finally, he says, you got to bring some wine. And some folks, oh, Lord, here you go talking about that drinking wine again. Well, wine represents joy. Wine represents joy. What he's saying here is that when you bring your grain offering in and you bring that sweet smell and aroma, come with joy. Because I don't know about you, the joy of the Lord is my strength. He gives me joy, unspeakable joy. This joy I have, the world can't, didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. So when I come to God, I got to come to God with joy. With joy. Unspeakable joy. Jesus saving joy. Joy. Oh, hallelujah. So I know how to rejoice and be glad in him. I know how to rejoice. And because when I give, I'm rejoicing. I'm a cheerful giver. Finally, verse 14 says, you shouldn't neither eat bread nor parched grain nor fresh grain until that same day that you have brought your offering to your God. It shall be a statue forever throughout your all generations in your dwelling. What he's saying here is this. Before you spend a dime for anybody or anything, you need to take that what you get. When the eagle flies on Friday, you first of the month per people, you twice a month people, those who get your, the, your what they call the, the your, your government checks, whether it's disability or, or uh, aid or whatever, retirement, you need to designate a certain amount and place it over for God. And, and, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be real with you. Don't be putting it in a check that's going to bounce. 
<clears throat> you say, oh, pastor, you meddling. Yeah, I'm meddling. Don't put it in no check that's going to bounce. You need to go and, and get uh, 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 some money out the bank. Put it on the envelope. Or you need to get online if your church is, is, a, is on online church and transfer that money right off the bat before you even go and get you some gas, before you even go and get you some food, before you even go and try to pay a bill. You need to take care of your first fruit. And I'm going to tell you, I'm, I, I just got to say this. I'm getting ready to close here in a minute. If you do this, he'll take whatever you have left and multiply it to meet all of your needs beyond anything you can imagine or think. I promise you that. I know that because I've tried him for myself. So finally, the last part of this lesson is sharing the blessing. And sharing the blessing, he says in verse 22, he says, when you reap the harvest of your land, you shall hold, you, you shall not wholly reap the corners of the field when you reap, nor shall you gather in and glean from your harvest. You shall leave them for the poor and for the stranger. I am the Lord your God. What God is saying here in, in this agricultural society, don't take everything out the field, leave some corners so that others who are poor and less fortunate can come out and be respectful by going out and getting a heart, getting gleaming from that harvest. And that gives them respect because they ain't got to be beggars. See, we, we're, we're especially in the African-American community, we didn't got sucked in to this beggar mentality. What a government supposed to be taking care of us. And I ain't talking about when you got your straight benefits, you disabled, you got Social Security you didn't paid into. I ain't talking about when you got old and you retire and you got Social Security you've been paid into. But I'm talking about these young folks. I'm talking about these folks that want to be on welfare all their lives. Come on now. You, 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 you can make sure you got something to cover your kids so that they'll have Medicare and Medicaid and, and all of that. But, but, but baby... Go get you a job. You got talent. You got something you can do. You can braid somebody's hair. You can go clean somebody's house. You can go wash somebody's car. Oh, I can't get no job because they don't want to give me no job. You better go out and get your own job. You know what you're capable of doing. Don't wait for somebody to give you a job. Start your business and make it a legitimate business and get off the street trying to be a street pharmacist. Because when you do that, you become a productive citizen, not only on this earth, but you become a productive citizen in heaven. And I promise you, if you give to God, he says he's going to give back to you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Would he put it into your bosom? My closing point to ponder. Give your first and your best to the Lord, number one. Number two, follow God's instructions for a blessing, for a blessed life. Number three, recognize that God is the source of all your blessings. And number four, whatever God has blessed you with, big or small, be a blessing to others with it as well. Let us pray. Father God, you are always giving as giving us your best. And still we struggle, Lord, to give back to you. Sometimes we are tempted to hold back. We are tempted to store up treasures on this earth. We are then tempted to keep everything to ourselves. But Lord, we need you to save us from our self-deception so we may live as you would have us to live by giving our first fruit as you gave us your first fruit, your only begotten son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord. In Jesus' name, 
Amen and amen. Before I close this recording, I'm I'm running long today, and, and I'm going to cut it short at this point, but I still have to pray the prayer of salvation with those who are listening now and those who are listening later. Please pray this prayer with me. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sin and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins, Lord. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life, to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you prayed that prayer and truly believe it in your heart, you are now saved. We bless and we thank you for joining us. Join us again on God in the Midst on Sunday School. I'm Pastor Mark McCoy, New Harvest Sea Church. We're getting ready to go into overtime on our conference call. And on our conference call, we'll talk about the lesson a little bit. And then if you got any prayer concerns or praise reports, we'll receive them. You can call us at 619-639-4733. Again, 619-639-4733. As always, be blessed and be a blessing. See you next time, Facebook.